Hi, I'm Gordon Wade at Wade Research. This telescope uh, we just finished up, it's a 12 and a half inch f4.6 Renegade. And we built this for a client down in Georgia, so shout out to Brent. It's going to be on its way to you really shortly. I wanted to tell you a little story about how I had to cut the poles, uh, the truss poles, to the right length uh, to get this telescope ready to roll. Brent had asked me, back when he contracted for the telescope, to make a selection of eyepieces for him and to purchase those eyepieces and ship them down with the telescope. So I looked around a little bit and I found these uh, eyepieces from Bader, B-A-A-D-E-R, and their Hyperion 17 millimeter eyepiece. This, this one's 17 millimeter, but it's from the Hyperion modular set of eyepieces. And uh, I bought him a set of four, a uh, 17 millimeter, a 24 millimeter, I believe, and a 10 and a five. And from 24 down to 5, that's a nice selection of eyepieces. So I uh, kind of gave them the range of magnifications, and yet nothing extreme in there. So uh, I, I was happy with the set. I purchased these eyepieces from a company called Agena. And i got to give real hats off to Agena. Their service was just outstanding, and the price was really good. These eyepieces, the thing I like about them, they have good performance, and they're reasonably priced. They run about $139, $140 each. Uh, which is a good price for a good quality eyepiece. So when these eye, eyepieces arrived, the first thing I did was to take off this bottom piece and then run some experiments on these uh, to find out exactly where the focal plane hits in the eyepiece. And by knowing that, I can set the distance above the focuser here that I want that focal plane to hit. And you do that by cutting the truss tubes to the right length. So I did all these calculations and figured it all out and did the cut on those truss tubes. And then I put the whole telescope, telescope together, took it outside on a clear night to test and see how we did. Now, if you folks have listened to the weather here in New Jersey uh, in the winter of 2015, it was four degrees above zero, and I had a 20 mile an hour wind. And it was uh, kind of late at night, early in the morning, so Jupiter was way low on the horizon. So it was kind of a miserable night, but I was able to test these and, and uh, make sure that they all came to focus. Now the trick to this cutting of the truss poles, uh, I, I use a nice saw to do it and a, a, like a, a stop so that I can cut them all to exactly the same length without any problem. Uh, so I got them all cut, put the telescope together, get the eyepieces in there, uh, heavy coat, <laughs> and then look through all the eyepieces to see if they all came to focus. And the trick is you don't want them to go down in too far and you don't want them to come out too far. Uh, the focuser has about a two inch travel on it or a little more than that. Uh, this is a Starlight Instruments uh, feather touch focuser, a very excellent focuser. So uh, like I said, I did all the calculations, got it to where I wanted it, and tested, and all four of the eyepieces came to focus. So I got all of these eyepieces to come to focus okay with my original cut, so all the calculations were good. But then I thought to myself, I'd better test some other eyepieces, uh, because the client is obviously over the course of his uh, ownership of the telescope, probably going to acquire some other eyepieces, and he's going to have friends that want to use an eyepiece to see how good that weight research mirror is in there. So uh, the first thing I did was to pull a different eyepiece, and I pulled one from my collection, which is a 22 millimeter Teleview, 22 millimeter, and you can see this is a little bit bigger uh, eyepiece, a little bit heavier, a little bit bigger, and when I put it in the focuser, of course, Murphy's Law came into play, and uh, the 22 Nagler takes more in focus. And sure enough, just when it hit the stop, I was just slightly out of focus still. So the big Teleview 22 would not come to focus. So what I had to do, of course, was to disassemble the telescope and chop just a little tiny bit off each of the four poles. And uh, actually, it was about a half an inch that I had to uh, take off. And to determine how much that was, I looked at where the eyepiece focused and then just racked it out to see where I wanted it to focus. So to determine how much to cut off each of the truss poles, I racked it all the way in and I knew that wasn't quite in focus, but it was close. And then I just racked it out to where I wanted that to focus and measured the distance that I had racked it out. And that became how much I took off the poles. Basically, if you shorten the poles, it forces the focal plane to come out away from the focuser. Uh, if you were magically able to make poles longer, it would make the focal plane go inside. 
and I wish that I could do that. <laughs> it would really be convenient, but physics is what it is. So anyway, I did that calculation, cut the poles off, and uh, the next night took it back out. It's even colder, <laughs> even windier, but uh, we put the eyepieces in there, and this time we were able to focus the 22 millimeter Nagler. So as I'm using the telescope, I'm looking at Jupiter, and Jupiter is just gorgeous. Uh, first I used the wide angle, the 24, to find Jupiter. Uh, use the little finder there. And then I started g racking up the power. So I went through the 24, then the 17, uh, and then down to the 10. And with the 10 millimeter, Jupiter is very, very lovely. Bands, all sorts of bands. Uh, this mirror is, is a quartz mirror, F4.6. And it is just uh, a really excellent view with this mirror. And given that it's four degrees and windy and, and not the best of conditions, to see those bands on Jupiter was a real joy. Uh, but as I got up to the higher powers, and Jupiter's getting bigger and bigger, uh, the light goes on in my head, and I said, ah, there's one last test. And that last test, that last test is the Teleview Ethos 6mm eyepiece. <laughs> and the 6mm uh, is a nice high-power eyepiece, and uh, the Ethos is, is a you know, nice top-of-the-line uh, Teleview eyepiece. So put this one in there, and the thing about the ethos is it requires more out travel. So I got the ethos eyepiece in there and racked it out until it came to focus, and happily it came to focus okay, and I had a little more back travel available if I needed it. So uh, we were able to get all the eyepieces with the Nagler 22 millimeter on the inside, then the four Hyperion eyepieces in the middle range, and finally the Teleview 6 millimeter ethos on the outside. So I was able to get all of the eyepieces to focus by properly cutting the distance on those poles. And uh, that was the solution to getting this telescope to perform well, no matter what kind of eyepiece is in there. Now the thing that's uh, also nice about the Renegade that made this thing a joy was the balance. Uh, if I take a small eyepiece and put a tiny eyepiece in here, uh, you notice that the, the Renegade isn't moving on its own here. Uh, take the small eyepiece, I can move the Renegade, I have the fluid smooth motion that you want, and there's no problem. Now, with many, many telescopes, they have a critical issue with balance. And the trick is, on most Dobsonians, the bearings are small. The advantage of a small bearing is that it makes the motion very easy. It's easy to move it up and down. The disadvantage of having that small bearing is it's really difficult to get the telescope to balance. And usually, on a lot of Dobsonians, that balance is a trade-off, and it's oftentimes not a good trade-off. What will happen will be, you'll put an eyepiece in, look at some object in the sky, and then you want to change eyepieces. So you'll take it out, and boom, your telescope will is lighter on this end, and now it'll travel up. And then, of course, the opposite problem will happen. You'll, you'll uh, have no eyepiece in it, and you'll put a big heavy eyepiece in there, and then your telescope will travel down. And that's a critical balance problem. And it makes observing really, really miserable. Because the, the reality of, of observing is you'll be looking at some object and you want to change eyepieces to go to a different power. So you want to remove this eyepiece and then put in a different one that weighs more or less and still have the object in view. And with a lot of telescopes, that just isn't possible. The balance just isn't quite there. Uh, but with the Renegade, we don't have a balance problem like that. You can see I can take this little eyepiece in and out here, and there's no balance problem. It, it, it doesn't move up or down at all. Of course, we still have the motion that we like here. <laughs> but with the Renegade, you can take that out and put the big one in. This is a Teleview 31 millimeter Nagler, uh, often affectionately called the pineapple. And uh, you can see in a Renegade telescope, there's no movement. Move the telescope anywhere you want, still have fluid motion, and you can remove the eyepiece, and the telescope doesn't fall up. Now, that balance is just a real critical issue, and for most other Dobsonians, it's really difficult to solve. Uh, what you'll find oft times is the builder understands that there's going to be a balance problem, and if you look back on the end of the box, a lot of them will put a little hook back there at the very end of the mirror box. And the purpose of that little hook is for you to put little weights on, little sandbags or little weights of some kind, 
so that when you know you're going to use a big heavy eyepiece on this end, you've got to run down there and put the right sandbag on the end so that your telescope balances again. Well, nobody wants to do that. That's not a good feature. So uh, having the telescope balanced so that all the eyepieces can be used, removed, replaced, without the telescope moving up and down on its own, that's a huge deal for comfortable observing and for efficient observing. And with the Renegade, the trick to that is our giant bearing. Uh, on the bottom of all the Renegades, you'll see a bearing that's just huge compared to other Dobsonians. If, if you look down on the bottom of a Renegade, our bearings range anywhere from uh, 22 or 23 inches diameter up to 30 inches in diameter. And on most telescopes, uh, the commercial Dobsonians, the bearing will be much, much smaller. Uh, the old school uh, sizing for bearings was to have them be about the same size as the primary mirror. Well, this being a 12 and a half inch telescope, that would imply a 12 or 13 inch bearing. Well, on this one, our bearing is, I believe, 22 inches. So you can see it's much, much bigger. And having that big bearing raises the place where the telescope balances. And having it be so big means it's very insensitive to imbalance. So that big bearing underneath the mirror is the secret to success in the Renegade telescope to have good balance and good observing. So that's some of the tricks that we put into this Dobsonian, this Renegade telescope. And that's how we cut the truss poles in order to get all your eyepieces to focus.